What is happening, everyone? Welcome to Mailbag Monday, number three. I hope that you all are not frozen from this uh, whole blast of weather that has covered uh, most of the country. Don't worry. I am fine. It is only cold enough for me to have to wear a hoodie. Still don't like it, though. <laughs> so we've got some good questions on this Monday mailbag. We've got some POTA stuff, some soda stuff, some more Wolf River Coil stuff. Lots of questions about Wolf River Coils, which is great. And uh, some questions about masks and stuff. So let's dive right in. Oh, there's a Bofang one, too. Bofangs. You know I love my Bofangs. So let's dive right in here. JB, want to thank you guys again for inspiring to get my ticket and expand my GMRS hobby to amateur radio, which I grew up with, uh, my pops. Well, that's going to make not a Rubicon sad, but welcome to the dark side and welcome to ham radio. <laughs> Love not a Rubicon. I mentioned uh, to you guys I was excited to get out that weekend hunting soda stations. That's great. Will you make a video on soda and soda hunting? Which logs are appropriate to use? I've been putting my soda contacts in the in the Z in the comments section. I need a place to put the contacts and grids in a dedicated place other than the comments. Not sure how to do this correctly, and I'm all alone in this. Thanks, John KN6 REL. John, you are not alone. However, I am not the guy to ask this question. I've done soda three times in my life. Two guys that come to mind right off the top of my head. Charlie from Red Summit RF. He's uh, a three-time soda goat. That means he has over 3,000 points. He's up there with the gods of soda. So go check out his channel, Red Summit RF. And also my friend Adam, K6ARK, who you may know from such videos as the K6ARK and Fed Halfwave antenna videos that I've done. They are well, well more versed in soda than I am. I can bore you to tears about poda. Soda, not so much. Either way, that is fantastic that you're getting uh, into amateur radio and you're wanting to get out there and get up on top of the mountains. I'll tell you what, man, there's there's not too many things in life that are more exhilarating than being on top of the world. So good on you for doing that. And go check out Charlie and Adam's channels. Next, uh, we've got Lee asks, Mike, can you do a video on the checklist you use to be sure you have everything you need when you go on a poda? Well, Lee... I would need to make a checklist first. <laughs> um, I'm not much of a checklist person. I, I know uh, I know that there are some POTA checklists floating around the world, but uh, to be honest with you, I, I have a uh, I use the Notes app on my phone for uh, to, to keep video ideas, and that is that is one of them, kind of my loadout. Uh, so that that is on the back of my mind. The short and skinny of it is you don't need you don't need much at all. The only things you need or a radio, coax, an antenna, some type of power supply, whether that's built in or whether it's a battery or whether it's a power supply that you hook up to mains, and a way to get your antenna up or a way to deploy your antenna, whether it's a, a you know ground-mounted Wolf River coils or, a, or an NFED half wave or something like that. And that's it. Everything else is secondary. They're backups. You know, some people like to bring food. Some people like to bring uh, all kinds of extra, like what if type things. So I'm kind of thinking that I'll probably end up doing like a QRP loadout video and a QRO loadout video because depending on your operating style and simply where you're going to be is really going to dictate what I'm going to bring. So there really is no no hard and set like this is what I'm going to bring every time I do portable radio. But I have done a loadout video a couple years ago. It's kind of old. I brought everything but the kitchen sink. Um, so you can check that out. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description for that video. But uh, yeah, that's a good idea. But uh, it really, there's, there's not much you need to bring. Everything else is going to weigh down your pack. And I've found as I've uh, become more seasoned as a, as a portable operator that... You, you start really questioning, do I need that other little doodad or, or widget or, or wingding? Uh, and I find that I don't really bring spares of anything anymore. So hope that answers your question. And I will make a video. So yes. Okay. Piggybacking on Parks on the Air and, and what I take. 
We've got a question about mass. Uh, Conked asks, K at MRD. That's me. What is the current brand and size mast you use for Poda? Well, that's a fantastic question, and I am glad you asked it. So I use typically one of three different kinds of masts. Probably the one I use most because I, I do a lot of QRP now is the Soda Beams Carbon 6. Absolutely love this mast. This is an 18 foot or six meter mast. Uh, I mean, you're only gonna use this for an NFED half wave. Just to hold, it's, it's only strong enough to hold the wire uh, and it is very, very thin and very, ooh, very flexible. Fantastic mast. Uh, I don't know the availability. I bought this about a year ago and uh, a lot of folks have, have told me they're uh, back ordered, so you might need to wait for that. But I believe I picked this up. I bought this from DX Engineering. So go to DX Engineering. Uh, you might could buy it from Soda Beams. They're in the UK. You might could check out their website too. The other two are uh, either this Pactena mast or uh, this is a mast for the DX Commander Expedition. Both of these... They're not exactly the same, but they're exactly the same. They're both 10 meter fiberglass mass. Uh, so that's 30 feet in, in freedom units, I believe. And uh, very, very durable, very rugged. They're a lot bigger than the soda beams, carbon six. Much, much, much bigger. So I don't go hiking through the woods with these, but if I'm gonna go to a picnic bench or something, this is typically what I'm gonna use and I'll, I'll just kind of lean it off into a tree with an end fed or something like that. Uh, can you hang a dipole from these like the Pac-10 link dipole? Yeah, they're gonna bend over a bit, but that doesn't really matter. I mean, think of a fishing pole, they, they bend over. These are just big fishing poles. So I would say as far as availability, uh, you'll probably have the best luck with the DX Commander Expedition mast that you can get from uh, m0mcx.com co.uk or something I'll, I'll leave a link in the description now one thing to be wary of are these these chinese carbon fiber mass that will lure you in with empty promises and fill you with broken dreams so i actually do have one this is by gocher gocher uh and i believe you can still get this i picked this up on i feel i got it on amazon I have one of these that I bought a few years ago, and it's a Gocher 10 meter mast, unavailable now. It is fantastic. I love it. I just don't use it anymore because it's three feet long when it's collapsed. So I picked this one up when I first moved to Texas just to try out. The very first time I used this, the tip broke. So now fortunately, the Chinese have the wherewithal to know that they're selling junk. And these do come with, I think, the, the top two sections you get an extra set when you buy these. So they're like 35 bucks. So if you don't care that it breaks and you might have to buy another one, uh, these will work. They're very light. I mean, it is, it is carbon fiber. It's not a very good carbon fiber. Nowhere near as good as the Soda Beams mast. But um, it, it, it's a thing. It exists. So uh, that's what I use. Another great one is spider beams. I don't own any of them, but I've, I've, I know guys that have them and uh, I've been, I've operated with them. Uh, another very, very high quality uh, mast. Honestly, they're, they're probably the best to be quite frank. So maybe, maybe I need to get one. I don't know. <sighs> I, I need more masks. Like I need a hole in my head. <laughs> Anyway, moving on, the next comment is about a little bit of Bofang love. So I did a video, uh, Tid Radio sent me, where is it? This Bofang Radio, it's, it's a UV5R. It's just marketed uh, with, with Tid Radio's brand on it. And it came in a package that had everything and I just loved it. And, and uh, I just felt I needed to do a video on it, you know, suggesting that the UV5R should, should be your first radio. Uh, it was mine. I fully support them. I love them. And uh, Del Fargus says, to make an analogy, the UV5R is to ham radio what a $100 Epiphone is to playing guitar. You can do all the same things that their much more expensive counterparts do, and both can give you the practice you need to get proficient at your skill abso frickin lootly Yes, I have way more expensive radios and guitars, but I find myself using the cheap gear 
90% of the time. I love this comment because I play guitar. Look at this. This is an acoustic guitar. I don't play a lot of acoustic. This is an Ovation. Now, Ovation makes incredible guitars, fantastic guitars. I'm not a huge fan because of how the body is, is, is round on the back. They're very uncomfortable to play. This is a very cheap Ovation. My, my late Uncle Jim found this at a garage sale, and uh, now I have it. But it sounds fantastic. It sounds even better when it's in tune and, and brownie points if you know what that song is. But this one is the cream of the crop. This is a Gibson Les Paul Custom. Beautiful, beautiful guitar. This is the benchmark for every guitar ever made. And if you think otherwise, you're wrong. I'm sorry. The Gibson Les Paul Custom is an absolutely amazing guitar. Are there more expensive guitars than this? Yes. Yes, there are. But this is, I mean, this would be the, I don't, I don't even know how to relate it to radios. This would be the, the most expensive Elecraft, the most expensive Flex. This would be the, uh, the ICOM 7610 if it were on steroids. So you don't need expensive gear to do what we do. Are they full of features and are they better and in every single way? Of course they are, but you don't need it. You can get on the air for $25, $35 with a, with a Bofang or a, a Bufang. How do you say it? <laughs> Bofang, Baofang, Paofang, however you want to say it. And uh, get started on amateur radio. So yeah, don't, uh, don't let people dissuade you because, oh, you're playing an Epiphone versus a Gibson, or you're using a Baofang versus an Icom. Who cares? You're making music. You're making contacts. That's all that matters. Anyway, moving on. Another question about Wolf River Coils. I, I, gosh, I just love the Wolf River Coils antennas, and, and it's great that we're getting so many questions about them. So Mark Eide, I'm going to guess that's how you say your name. Uh, I just purchased a Wolf River Coil Silver Bullet for Poda. Congratulations. Uh, and Field Day. A question regarding radials. What's your opinion regarding making three three-wire radial bundles for the Wolf River Coil's antenna, specifically having one element in each bundle cut for 40, 20, and 15? I'm thinking about how, how a fan dipole antenna works uh, with energy being radiated from the elements, having least reactants. Does this principle also hold true for ground radials cut for different specific resonances, or would this tend to detune a resonant vertical antenna? So, Mark, that's a fantastic question. Uh, for 40, 20, and 15, I would just use the stock radials that come with the Wolf River coils. I don't think you need to, to change anything. 40 and 20 work fantastic with them, and 15 is a harmonic of 40, so I don't think you'd, you'd really want to fuss with any shorter or, or resonant radials with that. To be honest, I don't even know where you'd start because you have that tapped coil. I don't know where you'd start to even begin tuning a counterpoise for resonance. Now with, with raised radials and verticals, those are more important to be tuned like the like the Buddy Stick Pro or, or BSP as, it, as it's called. Uh, that has a raised radial or counterpoise system and that does need to be tuned. So when it's off the ground, that's where it really matters. When it's on the ground, not so much. Now, uh, one thing I have experimented with, I, I haven't put tuned counterpoise wires on my Wolf River coils or, or any of my uh, uh, verticals for that matter. The DX Commander, those are not tuned radials. There's just a bunch of them. So there's enough wire to be kind of a half wave, if you will, for the longest band th that you want to be on. That's really more important with, with ground radials that I've learned from Lord Callum himself, DX Commander. So one thing I have tried though is folding back the counterpoise wires. So I've got the 330 three foot counterpoise wires that come with the Wolf River coils. Bring them back in and kind of just put the, the loose end underneath the uh, where the coax goes in and that kind of 
seems to change things around and shorten them up if you want to get on the the higher frequencies. So maybe give that a shot. But uh, I'd be curious if you've tried it and uh, let us know. And if anybody else has any suggestions on this, leave them in the comments. And and, uh, Mark, uh, come back and check the comments, see if anybody's uh, responded. Because that's a great thing about this mailbag. We've got a great community, and and I'm sure a lot of people have this question. I don't know the answer, but it's a great question. I, I don't think you really need to. The Wolf River Coils is designed to work kind of out of the box with what you get. So I don't think it'd be worth your time, honestly. But uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm always down with experimenting for uh, with, with antennas. So I'm certainly not going to dissuade you from doing it. And just like that, this Mailbag Monday has come to an end. Guys, thanks so much for all the support. A lot of positivity on these. I love creating these. And I love sharing these questions and bringing the amateur radio community together. Sometimes I know the questions. Sometimes I don't. And uh, a lot of folks are more than willing to chime in. Like last week, we had the Wolf River Coils on the on the mag mount question. And a lot of people chimed in saying that they use theirs with the mag mount and it, mag mount and it works fantastic. So if I don't know the answer, someone surely will. So guys, thank you so much. I will see you next Monday. And hopefully I will see some of you at Hamcation because I will be in Florida. So, (laughs) all right, guys, thanks so much for watching another episode of KNMRD Radio Stuff 73, y'all.